So we've all got a favorite photographer, or at least I'm sure most of us have. Somebody that inspires us, somebody who work that we get motivated by. Now, wouldn't it be fantastic in some way, manner or form, we could actually try and copycat their style a little bit. So this is how iPhotography hacks another photographer's style. So we'll start off this video by paraphrasing and saying this is not an exercise in ripping off another photographer. It's actually a video more about how to read a photograph, how to deconstruct all the different elements within it, and then how to rebuild that for our own practice. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at three photographs. Now these are three that us eye photography tutors have chosen between all of us, show you how to deconstruct them, and then a little bit later on, I think at the end, we'll probably choose one of them out to actually reconstruct ourselves. So this is our first photograph. It's of Kurt Cobain by Michael Linson in 1991. Now, given the age and the kind of grainy detail of the picture, we can kind of pretty much tell straight away that it's shot on film. The, the black and white finish looks really nice and crisp, which suggests it was kind of meant to be shot on black and white and it wasn't shot in color and then converted. You can see along the edges of his jacket, there's little specular highlights that are coming off the edge of the screen. That means there must've been a light shining from the left-hand side of his face to illuminate it. It's backed up by the shadows that are around his jaw and neck. Again, though all those little aspects, they suggests that both the lights are quite high up and probably just ambient lighting in the, the music studio. If you can see the two dangle or the one little dangling wire that's coming down across the frame on the right hand side. Now it may seem a little bit distracting but it tells us two things. That Linson shot this portrait kind of instinctively. He didn't really kind of have the time to get the perfect position. Therefore he doesn't decide to direct us pose as subjects. The second thing is that he chose not to edit it out afterwards which means obviously he quite likes it. Therefore for it's part of his style. So if you're kind of getting the idea of how to kind of break down and hack these images already, that's brilliant. If you need a little bit more time, let's go through a couple more images and do the same deconstruction again. So this next shot's called The Way Home by Tom Hunter. Now, Tom Hunter's kind of uncompromising portrait it is another one of her favorites. It's a fairly close crop on like a 5-4 crop ratio. So it's not a kind of a digital style photograph where three to twos and 16 by nines are more the common crops. Uh, five by fours are slightly more associated with like medium or large format cameras, which again suggests that he's worked on film for this shot. Okay, so point two. Now, we're looking at the composition of the actual crop. It doesn't actually kind of conform to any, say like a uh, compositional crop, like the rules of thirds. The subject is positioned in the lower third, but there are no striking elements actually across those power points. So it creates the idea that composition is not vitally important to Hunter either. Now point three, is that the horizon isn't straight. If you look at it here, purposely kind of overlooking constructs like this reaffirms the idea to, of Hunter that he doesn't want to be technically sound, so therefore the content of the image must be more important to him than the technicalities. Now, is this whole image itself kind of telling us about how he feels insignificant and hidden underneath the brambles? Is the subject a representation of him? Now, the connection between a photograph and the photographer should never be underestimated. So we can see from those few points already that kind of Hunter's approach is quite industrial. It's almost quite candid. And some of the themes that he's got, if you look across the rest of the body of work, is actually kind of quite dark. So it just kind of reaffirmed this idea that he's kind of speaking to us through his subjects on camera. So what we'll try and do, we'll move on to something a little bit different. We'll have a look at a third image now. So this is Elborn by David Rodriguez. Uh, now Elborn, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is a residential district of Barcelona and it's known, I mean the whole city itself is known for its colour and its energy, which is brilliantly represented in Rodriguez's shot. Now the shot itself is really vibrant, very rich as we say. It's using a, a bit of HDR or a stacking type effect to bring out all those textures and those details. Now HDR editing should only really be used to exploit different textures and so this is like the right situation. In terms of composition, the narrow alleyway forces our eyes down the distance through this alleyway, looking at all these different stories as we go. So Rodriguez seems to like using the camera composition to tell a story rather than working with a single subject. You may see the shot with all the different colors and textures as kind of distracting and a bit messy without a central character. But in truth, urban photography is just such this. It's about living in the moment and not waiting for something truly unique. Rodriguez frames the energy of the story through his editing, which draws us into the further and finer details.
Okay, so it's all very, very good kind of looking at all these shots and breaking them down and deconstructing them as we have, and hopefully that's helped you. So what we're gonna do now after taking all these building blocks apart is we're actually gonna build it back up and see if we can kind of recreate one of these photographs. With not having the airfare to go to Barcelona or the access to Kirk and Bain, obviously though you don't have to always do things like directly like that, we're actually gonna use Tom Hunter's image and kind of head outside with Harriet, with the camera, and we're gonna try and see if we can recreate that photograph in some manner or form. So we've come outside now to try and see if we can recreate a similar style of, of shot as we said to Tom Hunter. So I'm going to grab Harriet again from behind the camera to act as our model. Um, so in this instance we're not going to concentrate so much on the camera settings as we've explored with Hunter's work. He doesn't really kind of get too technical. It's just more about the, the feeling and the story. So we'll set a few things up and then I'll, I'll kind of give you a little bit of a breakdown of what we've done in a minute. So we've just kind of composed the shot. I've just moved the camera around a little bit so you can kind of see where Harriet is. And like we discussed with Hunter's work, it is quite dark, it's quite sad, quite somber. So we're trying to kind of recreate that idea with just like a bit of a lifeless body as if she's just been, you know, left on this, uh, this tree here. So again, with the camera, I'm just gonna kind of treat it very simple, no specific settings. Um, I'm just gonna try and take a few frames, not really focused on Harriet, but just the shot as a whole and she just happens to be in it as we were saying earlier. So I'm trying to place it towards the bottom of the frame, just similar to how Hunter's work was in that photograph that we looked at. So she's quite in, insignificant in the picture. There's no harm to even maybe kind of cut her out parts of the shot. Lovely. Brilliant. Okay, so I think what we'll do, we'll kind of go back to the studio and we'll just try and maybe kind of crop it and tweak it a little bit, just to try and see if we can get those similar styles of shots to match up with Hunter's. So with our image cropped, you can see how we've done. Now we can compare the two together between kind of Tom Hunter's work and ours. Obviously there's going to be differences uh, within things like the camera that we've used as well, but that's just really to give you an idea of how to approach telling a story. So if you're seeing an idea of a photographer that you really, really like, and you wanna try and kind of emulate his or her work, this has hopefully been a really helpful video to kind of show you how to do things like that. So if you've enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications so you'll be able to see the next video. If you have tried out images of, you know, your hero's work, then show us them. Get us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, tag us in the iPhotography course so we can have a look at your work. Obviously, if you've really enjoyed it and you want to throw in a bit of a comment to the video as well, then let us know below. Again, we've got all the links for our courses and all our social media in there as well. Until the next time, we will see you soon.